Welcome to the show this week. We're gonna get into many great topics. Have you ever thought about what you should be doing now to prepare for your retirement? What is interest rate risk and how that's affecting retirees and conservative investors today? Safety, growth, liquidity. You get to pick two of the three. Which two do you want? And finally, how much risk can you take on? An interesting concept that you're not going to want to miss. Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory. Financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring Well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring Well, plan to retire well. You know, some time ago when I was a young kid, my dad always said, find a career where you never have to work a day in your life. Well, I thought that was interesting, but at the end of the day, find something that you love and are passionate about, right? And I hope many of you out there have done that. I know myself personally love peop helping people plan for their retirement and see those dreams come true and watching them enjoy that time over their retirement. So this topic here is about what should you be doing to plan for your retirement? Maybe you're 20 years off, maybe you're 10 years off, maybe it's next week if you're lucky enough, but what should you be doing to plan for that? The first thing, set your goals. What should, what, what is that to you? Everybody's retirement looks different. Some folks have grandkids they pour their lives into. Others have hobbies. Others volunteer. Maybe there's a part-time job mowing grass at a golf course so you can get free green fees for yourself. You know, have goals of what you want to do. And if you're married, obviously work together on those goals and make sure those align, right? Have a plan. We talk all the time on this show about planning. Folks, this is never more important to have a plan heading into retirement. You're turning off that paycheck you've been getting for 20, 30, 40 years and now relying on other sources so you can live the lifestyle you want to in retirement. So have those goals. Inside, inside that plan and goals should be an income plan. Where's this money coming from? You know, is there things I should be adjusting today while I'm still working to make sure later in life that I have still have income and sufficient needs? Inside of that should be an investment plan. You likely have some forms of investments now. Should those be adjusted? Are they going to produce the cash flow that you need in retirement to live on? Taxes, boy, you probably get tired of hearing about that, and sometimes I'm sure you get tired of paying them, right? But have a tax plan for your retirement. Is there things, once again, today we should be repositioning to better off later on in life? And then healthcare. You know, if you're one of those folks that are lucky enough to retire before Medicare and maybe don't have some sort of healthcare through your employer or employment retirement, you gotta go in the marketplace, right? What does that look like? Have we started to look at income numbers and all that sort of stuff from that perspective to make sure, should we be jockeying some taxable funds around to take advantage of subsidies and stuff like that? Estate planning, never a better time to make sure all those ducks are in order, right? What happens if you pass away? What happens if your spouse passes away? Where do all those assets need to go? And finally, something that isn't what I specialize in and is not something from a financial perspective, but something to consider as we meet with so many people in this area. What are you going to do with your time? You know, having a plan for that. I'm sure you're not just going to retire and sit around and do nothing, but boy, maybe you worked eight, nine, 10 hours a day. All of a sudden that frees up 40, 50 hours a week for your time. What are you going to do with yourself and have that so you can maintain a healthy lifestyle? So folks, if you're recently retired, coming into retirement, or maybe way off, give us a call. We'd love to help you with that plan, help you work on the goals that you've set for yourself so you can plan to retire well. Hey, welcome back. I hope that you found that uh, little segment valuable. You know, one of the things that we uh, love doing here is teaching you what your options are. You know, when people ask me what I do, a lot of times I'm like, I'm a financial organizer, I find myself. Because if you think about it, when people uh, come to you and they say, hey, can I retire? 
uh, well, let's start that process of figuring out and organizing all of the things that you have put in place to try to set yourself up for retirement. So uh, I just had a couple uh, meetings last week where a couple clients came in, things had changed at work, and they were not really super prepared for that change at work. And so they came to me and they said, hey, listen, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what my options are and what my plan might be. And I said, okay, great, you've come to the right spot. Let's, uh, let's dive into that, okay? Let's start. Let's start with what your uh, 401k options might look like. Uh, do you have a pension? Uh, have you done any kind of social security estimates? What is your health care plan? How old are you? Um, you know, we start gathering all of this data. Uh, do you have uh, an estate plan? You know, do, you know, if if worst case scenario you were to pass away, does do you, does your assets know where to go? Um, how's your tax situation? Are you tax diversified? You know, and so what we get to do is just kind of organize all of these things together, make a really good plan, and uh, and educate all the way through. I know Nick, you had a specific. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of summer up, summing up that holistic approach. I mean, we're not looking at just income planning and investment planning. We're looking at that whole picture um, to include health insurance. I had a recent couple that came in and they were thinking about retiring and they had been paying a few hundred bucks a month for their whole working life for their health insurance premium. And they thought, well, that'd be the case on Marketplace when they retired. That was not the case, okay? I mean, based on their income, they didn't qualify for a subsidy, and they discovered that they had to pay over $1,000 a month to meet their health insurance uh, premium. And their deductible on top of that wasn't that great to begin with either. So it was a, a big shocker for them to learn that they weren't as prepared as they thought they were because they didn't even think about the health insurance of costs associated with retiring. So um, again, if you're looking for not just investment advice, but the whole retirement planning picture, please don't hesitate to give the number on the screen a call and, and just schedule that free, no obligation consultation to have that second opinion on your whole retirement portfolio. Hey, coming up next, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about interest rate risk and safety growth liquidity. Pick any two. Investing, planning, and now you're here. The long awaited reward you spent a lifetime looking forward to. But what now? After years of growing a nest egg, now you may want to manage it, use it to fund your dreams, make it last as long as you need it, and leave some for those you love. So what do you do? Wall Street continues to be uncertain, and some conservative options have dropped through the floor. How do you maintain opportunities for growth? and reduce risk of loss from market changes. That's where we come in. We are financial professionals. From investments and in insurance products to tax reduction strategies and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, provided by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. You've worked a lifetime to get here. Let us help you enjoy it to the fullest. For a complimentary consultation, simply contact us today. In this segment, I want to talk to you about what's called interest rate risk. Now, I talk about this in the bond segment because if you didn't know it, bonds have interest rate risk associated with them. Think about it. Again, if I have a bond paying 3% and tomorrow I can get a bond paying 4%, who wants my bond paying 3%? So they'll discount that bond fund 1% for the lost interest. Right now, now you wanna analyze the duration 
right? What's the average duration of those bonds in that fund? If that's, for example, six years, well, then they're going to discount that bond fund by 6%, right? You know, 1% over six years. So just understand that the ability to get behind any bond portfolio and analyze, you know, not only the credit rating of the bonds, but basically the duration to see how much risk you're taking. Because you have to understand the longer the duration, the more interest rate risk you have uh, accordingly. Now, a lot of people say, well, Larry, if I hold that individual bond <laughs> to maturity, um, they're not going to discount that. That's very true. You know, that's when you're holding individual bonds. But what I'm considering or when talking about is what's called bond funds, okay? A little bit different. Now, you should expect a higher interest rate for the longer you let them hold it, right? Think of a CD, all right? If you give the bank one year to hold that CD, they're going to pay you a rate. But if you give them two years, they're going to pay you a little bit higher rate, right? So most generally, people trying to get a higher interest rate are going to try to, you know, extend or get a little bit more duration. Now, one thing to consider in a rising interest rate market is what you call tips, all right? These are treasury um, inflated protected securities, okay? They're issued by the government. Now, you can get them from banks and brokers as well, but usually issued in terms of, let's say, 5, 10, 30 years. Now, if you hold them to maturity, okay, like an individual bond, the principal is protected. Okay, but once you buy them, if, the, if there's inflation, then the price of that tip is going to go up. If there's deflation, the price of that's going to go down, unless, again, you hold it to maturity. So this is a great investment instrument, you know, in a rising interest rate market. Now, you have to understand one of the disadvantages of these is that the, the starting interest rate they give you is a little, usually generally a little lower than what you can get out there in other fixed income accounts. But, but something to consider in a rising interest rate market if you want to protect yourself. Now, and, you know, one thing you, you, want to con you want to consider is in a rising interest rate market, one of the concerns people have is locking in duration, right? They want to lock something in for a long time when the interest rate might go up. So what you might want to consider is what's called a laddered approach. You know, have some investments that are one, two, three, four, and maybe five years out. And then as the one year comes up, you renew. The idea being that if interest rates rise, you can renew at the higher interest rates. Something we haven't been able to do for some time because we've been in a declining interest rate market for a lot of years. Hopefully you found this of value. Um, if we could be of any help in maybe in analyzing your portfolio for that risk, then certainly give us a call. Your grandchildren are precious to you. They are your life. This is your time to have that special relationship. Taking care of yourself is taking care of them. Centennial Wealth Advisory is offering a free, no obligation retirement review to make sure you don't run out of money during your retirement. Centennial Wealth Advisory, your best is yet to come. Do you ever remember seeing that sign in the store said price, quality, service, pick any two? Listen, when you're ready to make a purchase, you know, if you pay a very low price, aren't you probably giving up quality or service in one way, shape, form, or another? Think about it. Well, in the investment world, we have the same thing. It's called safety growth liquidity. Now, there are a lot of financial instruments out there. I challenge you to put this to the test. But if you look at most financial instruments, you're going to predominantly get two of the three in one way, shape, or another. So let, let's just run some examples. Let's say you have a savings account. It's at the bank. Uh, maybe it's FDIC insured. All right, what do I have? I have an, a financial instrument that's, that's safe, right? It's with the bank, FDIC insured, right? It's, it's fully liquid because I can take it out any time, but what am I giving up? Growth. <laughs> I'm not gonna get a whole lot for it right now in this day and age, right? Take a typical brokerage account with stocks, bonds, mutual funds, right? They, now, these are financial instruments that can go way up in value, all right, if they do well, but they can also go down in value, okay, depending on what the security is. So I have a situation where they're liquid. You know, I can, I can trade them anytime, get out of them. Um, they, I got great growth potential because they can do really well in any given year, but what don't I have? I don't possibly have safety. Okay, um, again, it depends on what financial instruments they, they are, but you, you're probably getting growth, you got liquidity, but no safety. Now take a, take a fixed index annuity. Now this is an insurance product, okay? It's fixed in the sense that it can't go down in value. So it has safety, 
It has, it has growth potential because it's to, the income is tied to some index, so that's good. But the downside is with most annuities, there's a time frame in which they want you to stay with that program. So I have to give up liquidity, okay? But now why is this important for you to understand or know? Well, you, the, why it's important is because you have to understand which of the two are gonna be predominantly most important to you. If it's safety is most important to you, if liquidity is most important to you, uh, if those are the two you want, then you're gonna have to make sure that your financial instruments that you're in match that. Okay, if you're somebody that wants great growth potential and don't care about the safety, but you want liquidity, then the kind of financial instruments you're gonna choose is gonna be much different. If you're somebody that really wants to know how you're positioned, how your portfolio is, then I encourage you to give us a call because we're gonna first wanna understand what two are important to you and then make sure that what you have matches that. So give us a call. Welcome back folks. What a great segment there on interest rate risk and safety, growth, and liquidity. Pick any two. Um, so when I think interest rate risk, I, I go immediately go to bonds, right? Um, the last 30 years basically we've been on a bond bull run. I'm sure you probably remember back in the 70s or 80s when uh, mortgage rates were like 17-18%, right? Well they've been steadily going down and down and down. We're at a point now where interest rates, they can't get much lower, right? They're either going to remain flat or they're probably going to start going up, right? And that's bad news for bonds. But that doesn't mean we want to get all the way out of bonds, right? Because they offer that, offer that safety and liquidity when you're in the market. And I know, Jack, you had some comments about that as well. Yeah, for sure. You know, one of the things that we want to look at when somebody has maybe a big uh, bond portfolio is uh, how are you situated? What is your duration? What is your interest rate risk? You know, there's that alternative uh, inverse relationship. If interest rates are low, as interest rates go up, then the bond values are gonna go down. So if there is a long duration and you do have a high interest rate risk, then we wanna look at what the alternatives are. And that's something that we're constantly shopping for and looking for and being able to educate our clients. Hey, I know why we have our bonds in our portfolio. How much of our portfolio do we want to be in bonds? What alternatives do we have? And then we talk through and educate, you know, how we can uh, come up with a plan that makes sense and can accomplish the goals that you're trying to accomplish as you uh, are in your retirement. You know, the other thing that segment that we got to go through was safety, growth, and liquidity, pick any two. If you were to ever map that out, you're gonna basically come up with three different strategies that you could employ if you were gonna pick two. You could have safety and growth. There's a strategy. What's the best strategy? That's what we get to help teach and educate you on. The next one would be safety and uh, liquidity. What does that look like? Hey, maybe that is in that bond portfolio. And then we have our growth and liquidity, that third strategy. Where do we go for that? Well, we're gonna go to the market and we wanna know uh, why we're there. Because if you understand the why behind what you do, it offers a lot more peace. Absolutely, and, and like Jack was saying, I mean, there's so many different tools out there. There's not one magic bullet or silver bullet that's gonna accomplish all those goals. We're gonna develop that plan that best suits your needs. Um, so stay tuned, coming up next, we're gonna do another blast from the past with Michael Reese, talking about how much risk can you take. The stock market has a natural life cycle that is destined to encounter peaks and valleys. Those scenarios are frequently preceded by events such as changes in interest rates, new international trade negotiations, treaties and tariffs, fluctuating levels in the national debt, global events that threaten the economic stability, political controversies that impact national policies, dramatic news headlines that shape investor sentiment. While each of these issues, and certainly all of them combined, generate cause for concern, it's important to remember that we have been in similar circumstances before. One way to help gauge market-related anxiety is to consider observations made by renowned investment experts who have weathered many markets' ups and downs over the years. Contact us today for a complimentary portfolio risk assessment. We'd love the opportunity to help you plan to retire well.
This week at CFP Talk, we are going to talk about risk and specifically the question, how much risk can you take? Now, can is, of course, an acronym, and we're going to talk about what that really means. So when it comes to risk, and whenever you talk to financial advisors, you talk to, or you go online to, say, a Fidelity, Vanguard, Schwab, you know, one of these places, one of the first things they do is they give you a risk profile questionnaire. And there's a reason for that. The reason is what they're trying to measure when they're asking you the questions on that uh, questionnaire is they, they're trying to measure something called your risk capacity. In other words, they're trying to ask the question, how much risk can, you know, what, what is your capacity to take risk? In other words, how much could you handle, if you will? Provided that, of course, you know, all things go well. Now, let's imagine, um, and this is where, and you know what I'm talking about here. This is where, you know, they're trying to identify, are you a conservative investor? Are you moderate or are you aggressive? Right? That's what they're trying to find out. You, I know you know what I'm talking about because you've done this probably a hundred times by now. But here's a big disconnect, and this is where people get into trouble because it has to do with the difference between capacity and what flows below. Because this is what you need to understand. As far as a discussion on risk goes, the financial industry, as far as they're concerned, all the discussion begins and it ends with that, capacity. We did the risk profile questionnaire. We know your capacity to take risk. We build a portfolio that matches that. We're done. They have covered their backside. If things don't go the way you want, you can't sue them because they can come back and say, nope, you told us we could take this much risk with your portfolio. Now, this is where things change for those of us who are fiduciaries. Now, our firm is, of course, a fiduciary firm. And, and for us, we feel we have to dig a little deeper. So what is the A? A stands for attitude. What's your attitude? I just gave you an example. Up here, they're trying to find out what. Are you conservative, moderate, aggressive? Let's imagine that you decide you're moderate. You're moderate. And we always ask a follow-up question like, okay, great. What does that mean to you? How much do you feel you can lose in a single year? And you know, what, What's your willingness, your attitude about losing money in a single year? And you might say, I'm a moderate investor. It's okay with me. I'm willing to lose 15% in a single year. Let's pretend that's you. But up here, what you don't know, dirty little secret of the financial world, if you are a moderate investor, they're assuming that you should be happily happy to lose 30% in a single year because that just happens sometimes. That's what a moderate investor is in these risk profile questionnaires. You see a little problem going on here? Yeah, it's a little problem, isn't it? You know, there's a third level though because as a fiduciary, we're still not done. We got to dig a little deeper yet. What does N stand for? N stands for need. The question I would ask is this. How much risk do you need to take to make your financial dreams a reality? What if you can make your financial dreams a reality at a 5% rate of return? What if 5% is enough to make all your dreams come true in retirement? You know what we do as fiduciaries? We say, okay, if that's what you need, here's our question. How much risk do you need to take to get to that number? Can I get to that number within that 15% within that wiggle room? Can I get to that average return and not take more than that kind of loss? If I can, fantastic. We're on target, right? Or do I have to go up here? Where are we? You see... People get into, you know, good people, just like you, they get into, into trouble in retirement because why? The industry has labeled you as something, conservative, moderate, aggressive. They have what you don't understand. They have certain expectations of people in that capacity level. And guess what? 
I'm still waiting for the first person who calls themselves a moderate investor as they're getting close to retirement and says, yep, I'm willing to lose 30% in a single year happily. I don't get that. We get people saying, no, I'm moderate. I'm only willing to lose 10%, 15%. That, the definitions don't match up. The core understanding does not match up, and that's what gets you into trouble. Make sure you're talking to someone that understands this stuff. Now, if you have any questions about this or anything else we talk about on the show, please feel free to give, give our office a call, come visit with us, or visit our website. Welcome back, folks. I mean, it's always great to see another blast from the past with Michael Reese on there. Um, he was talking about how much risk can you take in that CAN acronym. Uh, I had a recent scenario where it fit right into what Mike was just talking about. We had a couple come in and and they the, the husband was all about taking on as much risk as possible. He, he wanted to see those big gains in his portfolio where the spouse didn't want to take on that much risk. And so where most suitability advisors would stop and say, hey, you know what, your capacity for risk is pretty high, right? They have the assets, they, they, their attitude is good. I mean, they want the risk. But what we found is they don't really need that amount of risk. We plugged in all their numbers and, and came to find out that they didn't even need a 4% rate of return through the years to meet their goals. And that really uh, kind of opened the husband's eyes and he realized, you know what, maybe, maybe I don't need to take all this risk to meet my goal. Yeah, actually what Nick is saying there is stuff that we come across all the time at our office. And I think we're big believers in identifying the parts of your portfolio that are at risk. You know, to me, I think it's really important to know your risk and then to know what you're going to do about those risks. So many times people have no idea where their risks are and unfortunately they don't have a plan to deal with those risks. And so I think in this world if you can have some calculated risk where you know why you're taking on the risk for that portion, then it makes you uh, understand and be more confident in uh, being in that area of risk. You know, the other thing that Nick was talking about was the need for risk. And that's where I think we get to earn our keep. We get to take and uh, organize all your different financial uh, options out there into a cohesive plan. And at the end of the day, it, it calculates how much risk do you really need to even take? You know, in retirement, volatility can be a killer. So we want to watch out for that volatility and we want to go through and uh, position different things uh, for you so that we can lower that volatility and, and make your retirement much more predictable. Well, thanks for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed uh, your time with us and I hope we were able to add some value to your life. Uh, stay tuned next week. See you then.